Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how I created this cute little card using a Stamping Bella stamp and some Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers. I hope you'll stick around and see how I made it. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here. This year in my crafting, I am trying to focus on some goals. I have a video about that. I will link it below. It is my Crafty Gold Collab intro video. And a couple of the things that I want to do each month are use an old stamp or tool and color on a creation or a card or whatever I would make. So that's what I'm gonna do in today's video. I have all this stuff that I bought to use. Some of it's never been used, so my goal is to get it out and use it. Before I get started on the process of making the card, I'll share with you most of the supplies that I will be using, but if I add anything later, I will be sure to let you know. Once I do start that process, I'm going to go to a voiceover. So if I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. I am gonna be using this Stamping Bella stamp. Well, I will try to find it and link it below, but I'm guessing it's too old. This one is Aptitude. It is a little girl that she has cut out a string of hearts. And then there's also a sentiment that says, I love you this much. This has never been used, so I thought this would be a good time to get it out with Valentine's Day coming up. I will be stamping her in Versamark ink and embossing with detail black embossing powder. That just helps me with my coloring so I don't get outside the lines. I also got out my embossing buddy to make sure that powder only sticks to where I want it to. I will be coloring her with some Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers and later on screen I will pop up the colors and try to remember to say them what I'm using for each part of her. An old tool that I'm going to use are some of my Spellbinders Nestabilities dies. I chose a rectangle and then a scalloped rectangle that will just form a border around that. And for my layout, I'm going to be using this month's sheet load of card sketch, but I will only be using one. So I'm just going to be using the dimensions that I give here. If you want to download this for free, I will have the video linked below and I'll pop it in a card at the end of this video. I did go ahead and pre-cut most of the paper and I just cut the piece A and B from the sheet load of cards. I have a little strip of gray cardstock that will be my punched border piece. I have a gray card base here all ready to go. And then I got out a scrap of gray for the scalloped rectangle die. And then finally I have a scrap of Bristol Smooth White cardstock. This is what I'm going to be stamping my image on, and I just like the way that the Zig brush markers blend on this. Let's get started. The first step for today's card is to punch the gray strip that will go behind the polka dot paper. I am using a Stampin' Up! border punch. It's just a real basic scallop. I bought this a while ago. If I can find it on their online site, I'll link it below, but it might be discontinued. Once that piece was punched, I placed a strip of adhesive on the front and then that gets adhered behind the polka dot paper. Now I'm going to start putting my card together. The first thing I do is place a piece of striped paper at the top of the card and then I place the polka dot paper with the strip at the bottom and I try to get a gray even border all the way around. I forgot to mention earlier what pattern paper I am using. This is the Echo Parks Dots and Stripes Valentine Collection Kit. I also forgot to mention earlier that I cut a scrap of white cardstock to go on the inside of the card and we will decorate this later before placing it in there. 
since I have not yet placed these rubber stamps onto some removable foam or got them ready to be mounted on a clear block, for today I'm just using a removable glue dot to stick that to the top of my Misty. I will be inking the girl up in Versamark and then I'm going to use some detailed black embossing powder and heat set that so I have a nice outline to color in. I did zoom in for the coloring, but I will tell you that I am definitely not anywhere near a professional colorista. I am using for the skin 069 blush and 071 flesh. What I do is take the darker of the two markers and kind of go where the shadows would be, and then I use the lighter to go in and blend that out to cover the area. You will see that every once in a while, I go in and kind of wipe off. Um, if the marker gets dark here, I wipe it off at the bottom. I probably should have used another piece of paper, but sometimes it does get too dark and you need to wipe off some of that extra color on the lighter marker. You'll notice that on the shirt and on the hearts, I don't have two shades of the pink or the red. What I do instead is where the shadows would be is where I put my color marker and then I go in with the 999 colorless blender marker to get that into the rest of the open area. And this would be the marker that I have to wipe off a lot at the bottom when it gets that excess color. For the jeans, I do go back to two colors. I use the 034 Dull Blue for the darker color, and then the 303 Shadow Mauve to blend that into the pants. Next up, I color her shoes gray, and this was just to help pull in the gray cardstock from the card base. My shadow was 094 gray brown, and then I blended that with 091 light gray. And finally, I am going to color her hair. I used 065 mild brown for the dark parts of the hair or the shadows, and then I blended that with 067 mustard. I hope that my video today will show you that these Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers are super simple to use and as long as you have the right paper, they blend so nicely. And even though I do not consider myself a professional color by any means, I do like the effect that I get with these. I used to have tons of Copic markers and I tried for years to enjoy it and get the hang of it, but honestly I found that I could never find the right paper or it just got frustrating, so I ended up giving those to my daughter. She gets to enjoy them and then I can look for other ways to color my stamped images. Let me know below if you've ever tried these clean color real brush markers. Once she was all colored in, I die cut her with that rectangle die, and then I used the scallop die on the gray cardstock. To finish the image off, I went in with that 091 light gray and just put a small border all around the outside of the image, and then I used that colorless blender again to just kind of make that fade out. I think this helps kind of pop her up off that white cardstock and gives her kind of a base there at her feet that she is standing on. I wanted to add some dimension to this card, so I am going to put my girl onto the gray scalloped piece with some foam tape. You'll see there that I actually accomplished or got through a whole big blue roll of foam tape, so I did get out a new one. This stuff is super economical. I will link it below on Amazon if you want to go check it out. Once my focal point was in place, it was time to start working on the inside. Besides the sentiment on the inside, I wanted to stamp my girl on there as well, but I don't want her to be real dark. So I got out my Stampin' Up, I think it's called Basic Gray ink pad, and I'm going to stamp her off once on a scrap of white paper, and then I will stamp it onto the corner of the inside. That way it's just kind of a watermark on there. Next, I will be stamping the sentiment, which says I love you this much, in VersaFine Onyx Black ink. Once that's all done, I then just adhere that to the inside of the card, and now I have a nice place to write my message to the recipient. 
and I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but I got a spot of ink on the inside after I finished the card. But never fear, I got out my mono sand eraser, and with a little work, I was able to erase that pretty much completely away. I do take my time and turn my card around and just work slowly at this to get that off as best as I can. The final thing this card needed was some bling. So I got out some of my clear gems and I placed three of the smallest size onto the card front. And here is a look at the final card. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made this card today. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope that you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools that I use in the video, I do have some links in the description box.